Welcome back to Game Galaxy, and today I'm talking about ZZT, an amazing game and program that was released 25 years ago in 1991 in the month of October. What the heck is ZZT, you might ask? Well, it's something that's so very important and dear to my heart. I'm sure you've heard of a little company called Epic Games. They're the makers and designers of the Unreal Engine that games have been utilizing since the early 2000s, and modern games utilize the Unreal Engine 4, which is the current build to this day. But before the Unreal Engine and before Epic Games and before Epic Mega Games, we have to go back to the very beginning where it started with one man, Tim Sweeney, and his new company, Potomac Computer Systems. ZZT was the first release to ever come from Tim Sweeney and it was a huge hit. ZZT is a simple engine that utilized the ASCII text-based character set for its graphics which made use of all 255 available characters. ZZT was basically a program that could then load ZZT worlds or individual games which is why I consider ZZT an actual game engine. Tim released the game as shareware which included the world's town of ZZT, demo of ZZT, and tour of ZZT which showed all of the features that ZZT could do and how to play. Now these games aren't necessarily the most visually pleasing or all that good, but it's the underlying potential of ZZT is what makes it great, and Tim's games fall under the puzzle and adventure genre. But this isn't even the best thing about ZZT. Tim's worlds are whatever. <laughs> I'm so excited, can you tell? The best thing about ZZT is that it came with its own built-in world editor. Right from the program, you could launch into an editor and start building your own game. Tim created a simple scripting programming language called ZZT OOP, which stood for Object Oriented Programming. Objects, when created, could then contain lines of code such as this zombie from one of my games. The editor had a built-in help file that helped explain the commands and how to use the language. Through trial and error and practice, or even looking at how other people coded their games, is just something you learned and got better at over time. And that's what makes ZZT so great. Having a built-in editor created a community of game designers and enthused players that still exists today, even though it's a little bit smaller. Throughout my whole life, I've been in and out of the community making games for years. And the last game I actually made was in 2014, but we'll get to the games that I made later. The gameplay of ZZT is really simple as you move around this iconic white smiley face with a blue background. You can shoot bullets if you have ammo, which is notated by the ever-present inventory and status screen to the right collect gems which serves as the game's currency, and torches which can light up dark game boards which can be used for exploring a dark basement or a creepy cave. ZZT's editor has built-in enemies with their own behaviors, but in my games I usually created objects that were other smiley faces and programmed them to be my own enemies. One of the great things that came from the community was how much everybody contributed and took ZZT way further than it was ever intended to be taken. For example, the built-in editor only offered seven colors to work with, but one of the community's earliest and most influential contributors was Gregory Jansen with his Super Toolkit, or STK. The Super Toolkit was something that could be imported into your game file and then select colors that weren't available in the default color palette and use them to paint your boards with. This was an essential kit to be used and opened up tons of possibilities for other editors and enhancers to be created. Jansen's Code Red games also included some creative and intricate programming tricks that impressed people and he was considered a master ZZTer for a long time until he was seen to almost vanish from the community entirely. In my opinion, there were many ZZTers that far exceeded Jansen's work as the years went on, and I'm tipping my hat to you, Zenith Nader, but we wouldn't have had those breakthroughs without Jansen's work, so hats off to Jansen. ZZT utilized the internal PC speaker for its sound and music. Music and sound could be programmed in a very tedious way or use some of the music tracker engines, but most games only had a music cue here and there, and most games ran in silence. The one thing I wish ZZT could have had was the ability to use MIDI or mod files. Much like Megazooks, which was the spiritual successor to ZZT created by Gregory Jansen that could make use of mod files for music and had increased graphical and game board capabilities like Scrooge. Rolling. I never got into Megazooks because the programming language changed from ZCT and I wasn't interested in starting over learning from the beginning. I never even played any of the Megazooks games that are out there, so maybe one day I'll have to go back and check them all out. ZZT doesn't actually stand for anything. It was named that so it would show up at the bottom of bulletin board systems and newsgroup listings so it was easily found. Through the years, I've created a bunch of different games, and one of my favorite things to do with ZZT is to utilize different font sets with your games. I would use a batch file to load a different font before ZZT and that would change how some of the characters looked and gave you more options. The two font sets I liked using were Hyper ZZT and my favorite ZZT Faces which gave you more facial expressions for objects. 
Some prominent games I made through the years that were standout was Zimni Blaster, a Space Invaders type game where you play as me in high school taking on an army of clones of my German teacher, all to get the key to his desk to have access to his gradebook and give me an A. This was an inside joke among me and my friends and I actually loved this teacher, but I wonder if this game could have gotten me expelled even though it's something so cheesy. The next notable accomplishment was a game I made in 2004 for a 24 hours of ZZT contest. Every now and then the community would hold these contests where we'd have 24 hours to create a game and had to implement a certain word or phrase into the game. The game was called Haunted Dungeons and it was a gauntlet style game that I always intended to make into a larger game but never did. And finally, the game I spent the most time on was Necrosis, which is a zombie survival game that borrows a few beats from Resident Evil 2. So I'm going to be doing video playthroughs of Haunted Haunted Dungeons and Necrosis, two of the games I created with ZZT. If you're interested in checking out these games with commentary from me, click these video annotations or the link in the description below. Also, I'm going to add all three of these videos to a ZZT specific playlist on the channel main page so you can find them easily. If you want to check out ZZT or any of the ZZT worlds, head over to ZZT.org, which is home of Z2, the longest running community and archive of ZZT worlds for years. It's the place to be. They also have forums uh, of a very tight-knit tight -knit, but welcoming group, albeit a little strange at times, but I love all of them. Off the top of my head, Dr. Doss, Quantum P, Zenith Nader, Papa Bear, Viavis, and Commodore. Thank you guys so much. You guys helped me throughout the years so much. You have no idea. I was Hayabusa in and out of the forums here and there. You guys gave me a lot of help and were very kind to me, so I thank you very much. If you like this video, please slap that like button. And if you've lasted this long with me, thanks for spending the time learning about such a tiny but influential program that without its success, we wouldn't have the Unreal Engine. Think about that. That's crazy. So thank you so very much for watching. And forever and ever, I will be a ZZT'er for life. <laughs>